games. They didn't make the NCAA tournament, but they made the NIT an incredibly strong and talented recruiting class. If that was bottoming out, that wasn't too bad at all. Well, before Josh Pastner coached his first game at Memphis, he had already recruited the number three recruiting class in the country. That young man knows how to go out and get players. Carl Hess, Mike Kitts, and Rain Tilly are the officials tonight. We are underway here with the Garden in New York in the first of two with Michigan State and Syracuse still to come tonight here with the Jimmy V Classic. Oh, it starts out in man-to-man -man defense, and they give up a baseline drive. Great look in the corner for Tyrell Reed. Tyshawn Taylor leading the Big 12 in assists just under seven per game that little baseline drift and Tyrell Reed whenever he catches the ball he catches it ready to shoot you mentioned it Kansas is shooting a ridiculous 57 percent from the field so far this season Wesley Witherspoon who shot 43 percent from the on the arc last year misses the three that's one thing that Memphis really can't have they've got to move the ball from side to side before they attack they cannot settle for jumpers Bob inside Goes a miss, and back come the Tigers. Memphis so far this year is 7-0. They're ranked 14th. Kansas is 7-0. They're ranked 4th. And the rebound is controlled by KU. Witherspoon had a good drive to the basket there. Got to go up stronger, but that drive is still going to be there. If they move it from side to side, they'll have a better opportunity to attack with their quickness and athleticism. And here's Kansas moving the ball as well. It's shoot around today. All you heard from Bill Self was the ball is sticking. Move the ball. He wants it swung side to side. Keep moving the defense until you get a good look. And a travel there on Marcus Morris. This Kansas team is the best passing team in the country. They average 21 assists per game. And this is a team that really does reverse the ball. If they started off on the right side of the floor, they are going to put it to the left and again to the right. Sometimes that second swing is even more effective than the first. They really move the defense, and they do not hold on to the ball. They move that ball. The last two games have been their two toughest games, an eight-point win over Arizona, a game you did in Las Vegas, and then a somewhat controversial one-point win over UCLA and a late foul call that went against the Bruins. And Mario Little made one free throw to give Kansas the victory. But we see a lot of top teams this year beating up on some weaker teams. But then when the competition gets tougher, all of a sudden it's a one-point game, a four-point game, a lot of close calls early. Well, I think for Kansas, sustaining their effort throughout 40 minutes is really going to be a key because they had double-digit leads in both those games you're talking about, UCLA and Arizona. And this is the type of team that has to learn how to put teams away. Now, both those teams are good teams out of the Pac-10. But I think Kansas is a good bit better than both. Charles Carmooch, a transfer from the University of New Orleans, misses both free throws. A lot of new faces on this Memphis team. Six of their top seven in minutes were not with the team last year. The Kansas turnover. And then Memphis gives it right back. Numbers now. Marcus Morris for three. And the long rebound comes down to Joe Jackson, a freshman from Memphis. Black's got to go straight up there. When he jackknifed, he brought the defense back into the play. If he goes straight up into the defense, he can get a foul in a bucket. There's a foul going against Memphis down in the block. This is a typical freshman mistake. Joe Jackson takes the ball down court, stops at the free throw line. You got to go right into Marcus Morris, go right into his chin and pick up that foul. You have to at least come away with a foul in that play. Black called for the Memphis foul. Now Marquise Morris. And the rebound controlled by Will Barton, 6'6 freshman, only 175 pounds, tremendous skill and athleticism out of Baltimore. His brother, Antonio Barton, is also on the Memphis team. Well, one thing that Kansas can do with these guards is try to be physical with them. I'm not sure there's a guard on this Memphis team that weighs over 175 pounds. They are long, they're athletic and quick but they are not bulky and you might be able to knock them off the ball with some physical play. One thing that Josh Pastner has at his disposal is a deep bench so if he doesn't like the way guys are playing they're coming out new guys are coming in and he just went to Chris Crawford another freshman from Memphis Angel Garcia a junior out of Puerto Rico and Will Coleman a senior from Columbus Georgia Coleman and Garcia the big guys Memphis right into their high low and isolating 
Markeith Morris inside and Angel Garcia just got his arms wrapped around him. So much focus Jay on Marcus Morris and the incredible start that he's had to the season but Markeith Morris is a much improved player this year as well. Yeah he's really been a, an outstanding rebounder. He's another guy that can make a, a face up shot. He can hit a, a trail three and really stretch the defense out. The split there the floater by Taylor doesn't get the bounce. A lid on both baskets right now other than that early three and it remains three to nothing Kansas almost three minutes into the game. Nice back screen along the baseline just can't handle the ball. They've had opportunities. Nice look ahead Coleman the extra pass and Barton with the up and under. Now he just did the same thing that Black did is instead of going straight up yeah, because he, he got away with it. If he goes straight up he probably finishes that play and maybe gets fouled. Good strength there by Marcus Morris. Well, you really have to do your work early as a post defender. Not only do you have to get down the floor quickly and beat these Kansas big guys down the floor. But you've got to meet him at the free throw line deny him that position. Jackson gets back the air and pass. He scored over 3,400 points in high school. Will Coleman there to clean up the mess. Well, that was just a nice job by Jackson to circle back. He kind of used a little hesitation move along the baseline. The baseline opened up for him. Jackson listed at six foot, 175 pounds. I think that Kansas thought that Jackson was going to take this ball back out. When he caught it, as soon as he takes out, everybody stands up. And Will Coleman kind of set a little screen along that baseline and picked up that offensive rebound. Thomas Robinson is into the game and out for Kansas wearing number zero a sophomore from Washington D.C. very talented athletic big man. He's out there along with Marquis Morris in the front court as Marcus sits down. This is Robinson. Off the rim rebound to Memphis. Antonio Barton now Will's younger brother into the game and right into the action of missing a tough runner. Just a bad shot. Good intentions really pushing the ball up the floor to put pressure on Kansas's transition defense but that's a shot Kansas wouldn't mind them taking. Robinson passed up the 16 footer. Now Marquise Morris spins to the baseline nicely done. Kansas getting single coverage down in the post. And both Mark Keefe and Marcus Morris can make a turnaround jumper fading away over either shoulder. Coleman brought the ball down, tied up by Reed. Oh, they called a foul on wow. Reed. That's not a good call. A break there for Memphis. We'll step aside here in ESPN. Kansas and Memphis in a game one, a Michigan State Syracuse in a game two. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Doris Burke with you. Dick Vitale will be here for the second game tonight. John Saunders, Coach Bob Knight, Digger Phelps are on the set for half times and between games. Nice recovery by Mario Little guarding Witherspoon. Fell down, was able to get up and recover to Witherspoon in that corner. Little is checked into the game along with Travis Relliford, a very deep Kansas team as well that will get deeper. In a little while when Josh Selby the heralded freshman joins the team about a week and a half from now when they take on USC. Kansas played kind of a soft man there and Memphis didn't really put the ball on the floor and attack. They were just content to throw the ball around the perimeter and take a jump shot. They're not fighting to get what they want on the offensive end. They can't settle. Kansas is moving the ball. Nice pass inside. Robinson misses the slam. Boy, Kansas has had four or five shots either Clang off the rim or roll off the rim here in the early going or they could have a big lead. Well they've turned the ball over four times and a nice drive into the paint by Travis Relliford and did everything right but finish the play and Thomas Robinson usually dunks that so hard the ball hits the ground before he does. <laughs> the Barton brothers in there together will number five Antonio number two will misses the runner Robinson the outlet of Brady Morningstar nice look ahead Relliford avoids the defense and lays it in. Oh, what an outlet pass by Robinson and Morningstar is an outstanding passer. I mean that young man not only passes ahead he feeds the post as well as any player I've seen this year and a very good defender as well. You think of him as a shooter first but he might bring more to the team in passing and defense. Well I think that a guy like Morningstar and also Tyrell Reed don't get near enough credit for making this Kansas team as good as it is. You can't win without stars but you also can't win without the kind of role players that Bill Self has got. 
and he's one of them Brady Morningstar an outstanding post passer a fifth year senior from Lawrence Kansas hometown kid playing for the Jayhawks Kansas you can see reporting an assist on 63 percent of its field goals they like to move the basketball Carmooch knocks it down a young man who was displaced by Hurricane Katrina moved to Houston then back to New Orleans playing at UNO but then they went Division three so he transferred and is now playing for the Memphis Tigers they played for New Orleans and coach Joe Pasternak who did an outstanding job there they went to Division three so everybody that was on the roster there could transfer with no penalty Chris Crawford from the corner yet another freshman from Memphis three very talented freshmen all from Memphis which year after year Jay turns out an unbelievable amount of young basketball talent yeah, and keeping that talent in the city is going to be important for the rebuilding of this program by Josh Pastner he's already done a really good job getting Adonis Thomas maybe the best player in the country next year held ball Memphis ball on the possession arrow a Wednesday night at 7 Eastern here on ESPN NBA action as Carmelo Anthony and the Denver Nuggets take on Paul Pierce and the Boston Celtics and then at 930 tomorrow night back to the college game from the direct TV SEC Big East Invitational Notre Dame off to a good start this year they've moved into the top 25 taking on Kentucky. Well, let's see if Memphis can start attacking the paint off the bounce they've set a lot of ball screens. Jackson does and draws the foul. Oh, the held ball, excuse me, a held ball. So goes back over to Kansas as we check in with Doris again. Well, Jay, you're making a great point about Memphis. Their whole theme tonight for Josh Pastner is attack. They believe they can get off the dribble drive and either find the next guy. Their big theme tonight, the open man is the go-to man. Ten different guys have led this team in scoring. Obviously for Kansas, they're going right now through two guys, the Morris twins. A little bit more balance for Memphis, Jay. You know, Doris, I, I haven't seen a, a team do a better job of getting the ball inside than Kansas has done. He do such a good job of feeding the post, and Wesley Witherspoon, if he can start knocking that shot down, boy, that'll open up some drives. Remember, as a freshman, he actually played point guard for a couple of games when John Calipari was searching for a point guard before eventually putting Tyreek Evans in the role. Now Witherspoon plays either small forward or power forward. Josh Pastner nearly getting run over on that exchange. Uh, Wesley Witherspoon moving the ball from one side to the other. He's got a, a pretty good matchup. They're a little concerned when he's being guarded by Marcus Morris there that Morris is going to give up a drive. So he played a little bit off of him so as to take away that drive and wound up giving up an open shot. Elijah Johnson, number 15 on the floor for Kansas with Little, both Morris twins, and Tyrell Reed. And there's a foul on Carmooch. Boy, Witherspoon got the foul. He, Witherspoon did a good job there. All he all he did was put both hands on the ball handler. That's an automatic call. And that's something where you got to play with your arms up. You can bump them with your chest and get away with it. But anytime you have two hands on the ball handler, even though it's incidental contact, it's going to be called. Get two ball screens in a row. The first guy slips to the rim. The second guy spaces out. Another Kansas turnover. Been a big problem for them here early going. The quick shot again. This time it's Crawford who knocks down the three. Well, this is a young team playing with confidence right now. Bill Self going to bring Tyshawn Taylor back into the game. They have been very loose with the ball. You got to give the credit to this Memphis defense. Look how far out they're making Kansas start their offense on the floor. An 11 to 3 run right now for the Tigers. Marcus Morris misses the three. Rebound Memphis. And a foul underneath the basket on Tarek Black of the Tigers. We'll step aside here for the Garden. But Memphis on a nice run. They've taken a three-point lead over Kansas. JimmyV.org. Every dollar you donate goes directly to Cancer Research. Game one of two here at the Jimmy V Classic. Michigan State and Syracuse to come in the second game. Dick Vitale will join me for that one. And Mr. Billis is heading from 2D to 3D. These games also being broadcast in 3D tonight as Markeith Morris lays it in. Uh, the, this game is on ESPN 3D right now with Mark Jones and Bob Falvano. And the Jay will slide over with Jonesy for the second game as Witherspoon can't finish on the jam. Nobody rotates to get back and Tyshawn Taylor flushes it. And what a turnaround that was. Memphis did just about everything right except finish that play and Wesley Witherspoon trying to wind up and get himself on Sports Center. Instead, he got Tyshawn Taylor on. Ball 
ball screen roll replace action. Well defended by Kansas. Coleman the slip. And another turnover. I like Kansas hasn't defended well. They just turned the ball over. Elijah Johnson steps into a three. And even though that was what you might consider slow developing for a fast break, that's part of your transition defense. And not great communication by Memphis in transition. They've got to do a better job of talking and communicating, which can be a really tough thing for a young team to do. And just like that, it's a 7 to nothing run for the Jayhawks to take a four-point lead. Coleman again, and that's what... Josh Pastner wants to see him do. Rebound and defend at this end, and at the other end, just set screens and run to the rim. Keep it simple. And they kept it simple by really keeping the floor spaced. You keep the floor spaced, you give that pair a lot of room with which to operate. Marcus Morris, strong rebound, gathers. And here comes Carmooch. We have seen a lot of bunnies missed in this game. Count it. Boy, again, some quick shots and some low percentage shots at times for Memphis, but they're making enough of them to stay in this game. Well, nothing if not aggressive goes right into the chest of Markeith Morris, and Carmuch has got a lot of ability. He's a good shooter, but you can give him some. He needs some time to get that shot off, but what I've really been impressed with is how he defends and how aggressive he is offensively, looking to take advantage of every opening. Well, Jay, the foul was on to Markeith Morris, his second. He has gone to the bench. Tarek Black, by the way, a freshman for Memphis, has two fouls as well. Josh Pastner just changed every player that he had on the court, except Carmooch, who was shooting the free throw. Well, he's got so many like players. So he can afford to do that. Good pass. And Marcus Morris finishes inside. That was a great angle where only the offensive player could get it. Passed away from the defense up to the square. And the offense could hold off and then go get the ball and lay it in. That was beautifully run. Angel Garcia, number 41. He's really, he's a big guy, but he's a perimeter player, an outside shooter, not really a post player. Now he gets inside and misses the short bank attempt and another run out for Kansas Johnson with a slam anytime you have penetration into the paint there's got to be somebody that rotates back so that you're not giving up that easy bucket that was a another really good outlet pass by Thomas Robinson he does a really good job of looking up the floor after he gets the ball Jay if you didn't know who these guys were for Memphis would you still know they're a very young team with some of the mistakes they made no question I mean even their bodies look young out on the perimeter very thin team and but they're going to be really good I think the, the best part of this team is how hard they play and you can cure a lot of ills when you play hard as we mentioned 23 wins last year and NIT bid they have set their sights higher to at least get back to the NCAA tournament how do they stack up with the other top teams in Conference USA I think they're the best team in Conference USA but they're going to have to get used to physical play because I think teams are going to come after them physically Another Kansas turnover, number eight. Just a miscommunication. It looked like Robinson was supposed to roll to the basket and get a replace up from the corner. And that pass was supposed to go to the corner man coming up. The Jayhawks average only 12 turnovers per game. They've got eight in the first 12 minutes tonight. Another quick shot, this time by Antonio Barton. But Memphis will retain possession. Well, Memphis is trying to get everything off that first drive and just because you drive into the paint doesn't mean you've got to be the guy to make the play you can drive and then draw the defense to you and get it to somebody else and move the ball getting into the paint is job number one but you don't have to make the play when you get in there Witherspoon has it deflected away by Taylor and a timeout on the floor he is open. It just depends on the angle of the pass. He's not open now, but you pass the ball to the wing to Tyshawn Taylor. He's got his man on his hip. There's no pressure on the ball, so Taylor's going to be able to throw it up to the corner of the square, and Marcus Morris holds off Angel Garcia, can get the ball, and that's an easy two. Actually could have gotten fouled there and made it a conventional three-point play. That's one of the things that Bill Self's teams do extraordinarily well, is they throw the ball inside to their big guys. And a credit to, the, to Coach Self and the program look at what they've lost from last year three players now playing in the NBA Sharon Collins Cole Aldrich and Xavier Henry yet Kansas is unbeaten ranked fourth in the country 
And along with Kansas State, right now the class of the Big 12, and obviously a contender to get to Houston in the Final Four. Yeah, I think Kansas is the best team in the Big 12. They're certainly going to get a lot of resistance from Kansas State. And I think the thing that Kansas is going to have to worry about the most is the physical nature of Kansas State, because where they may be vulnerable is against a physical team. What is Josh Selby going to mean to Kansas when he joins the team on the 18th of this month? He brings him a breakdown guard. You know, Josh Selby can score. He can get into the lane and get you a late clock basket by himself. Speaking of by himself, Memphis continues to, to kind of do it on an individual basis. This time it is Chris Crawford knocking down the shot to make it a one-point game. Taylor. Off the back of the rim, a battle for the rebound. Thomas Robinson has it, but can't finish. But Robinson just fought to get that ball. And this Kansas team not finishing plays that they should. Poor closeout. Garcia loses the handle. There has been some sloppiness so far in this game from both teams. You gotta respect the three-point ability of Marcus Morris. Robinson inside. This time he converts. Well, he's got such a strength advantage against Wesley Witherspoon inside. He got him on his hip and just turned and pulled his way to the basket. There's nothing Memphis could do about it. And Memphis out of sync offensively. You can see it. They're just kind of freelancing. Jackson, no. Rebound Robinson. He didn't really make the defense work. Nice pass. And Morris fouled hard. Great touch pass by Robinson. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. A great doubleheader coming your way Saturday. It begins at 3.15 Eastern time. It'll be the balls of Tennessee taking on another one of the top teams in the country, Pittsburgh. And then at 5.15 Eastern, Indiana and Kentucky from Rump Arena. Both games available online at ESPN3.com. And on your phone, Jay, you'll have that first game, the uh, Tennessee-Pittsburgh game. How about a preview? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Scotty Hobson play again. He had a terrific summer, and that's an athletic team that Tennessee has. And they're going against, I think, one of the best defensive teams and one of the most solid offensive passing teams in the country. I think this is the best passing team in the country that we're seeing right now in Kansas. I think Pittsburgh would be in the top three or four of passing teams. Mario Little back into the game. Tyrell Reed as well for Kansas. The last foul on Memphis was on Angel Garcia, his second. So Garcia and Black, two of the three real big guys for Memphis, each have two fouls. And that forces Wesley Witherspoon back into the power forward position. Good rebound by Coleman. They need more of that. Well, Witherspoon can be a matchup problem at the power four spot, the power forward spot on offense, but where he has problems is on the defensive end. And KU's gone a little bit smaller right now as well, with Little playing the power forward spot. Marcus Morris, the block. Kansas ball. Barton just forced it there. Memphis isn't moving the ball from side to side before they attack. They're attacking off the first side and usually off the first pass. And that's not making the Kansas defense work. That's something they'll figure out as they get older. But it's tough to try to figure it out on the floor at Madison Square Garden when you're playing a top five team. Will Barton just picked up the foul. That is his second. So he goes to the bench and it puts Kansas into the bonus. And one of the things when, when you're a young player, Dan, is you start to think of fouls as just your own. Every time you foul, it isn't just your second foul. It right. can be your team sixth or your team seventh. That moves you that much closer to the one and one. And then every common foul results in points. And the free throw game, I think, is the most important battle in basketball. The free throw line is the most efficient place from which to score in a basketball court. You keep your opponent off the free throw line, it gives you a better opportunity to win. Taylor knocks them both down. Marcus Morris on the bench right now. Brother Marquise there as well. Jeff Withy, a seven foot redshirt sophomore out of San Diego, number five, has come into the game and now for Kansas. And another Tiger turnover. Now Kansas has done a pretty good job of staying low and angling the ball handlers away from the paint. You know, they're not able to stay totally in front, but what they've done is they've angled them out to some tough spots and they've been able to knock that ball away. A lot of deflections off of drives and I think the Memphis has to do a better job of being strong with the ball and protecting it. Little with some room. The kick to an open morning star who knocks down the corner three. It's too easy. Moving the ball getting open looks Kansas up by eight. 
horses and I'm not sure you're one of those who can I think this might yeah. be a new trademark for me <laughs> you might see me in these all the time is this your 3d debut my 3d debut nice. We're looking forward to it. Mark Jones doing play-by-play -play with Bob Valvano in the, the 3D telecast of this game. I know also in this building the uh, the Heat Knicks game next Friday night will be available on ESPN and ESPN 3D. Final four-minute segment of that last half. They won the hustle plays. It was 5-zip, five 5-1. Five he said the only way we win this game is to establish ourselves on the hustle plays in four-minute segments. We'll see how they go here, guys. And we are underway here in the second half. Kansas and white, Memphis and blue. Don't forget, Syracuse and Michigan State still to come here tonight for the Jimmy B Classic. Memphis trying to spread the floor and get that dribble handoff action. Arbuch, tough shot from the elbow to tie it. Probably could have gotten further into the lane, but that was a nice pull. It went straight up and down. Is this a Memphis team, Jay, you see being a whole lot better in February than now just because of the experience they'll get? Yeah, I think they'll get better and better. I mean, they play hard. They need to learn how to play hard together all the time and sustain it. There's that good angle on the uh, pass into the paint again. Marquise Morris with the slam. Well, you just isolate the big guy inside. And when you move the ball to different spots, you're ultimately going to catch that big guy adjusting his position and be able to seal him off. And Kansas has done a pretty nice job when they haven't turned it over of sealing off and getting that ball inside. Taylor with a steal for the Jayhawks. You bring it down, they take it. Mark Keith Morris for three. Long shot, long rebound. And Taylor probing on the inside draws the foul. You know, that's a, an indication of just how unselfish this Kansas team is. Tyrell Reed had a good shot, but Marcus Morris had a better one, and he gave that ball up to the guy that had the better shot. Now they missed it. But that was a really good offensive possession. Marquise Morris again. And the rebound down to Witherspoon. We'd like to see Marquise Morris try to get that ball to the rim. I and mean, that's not a bad shot. It's a good shot. But he's strong enough where he can pull his way into the rim uh, or toward the rim and pick up a foul, go right into the defender and draw contact. Markeith, number 21, he's an inch taller and 10 pounds heavier than Marcus. Both can play inside and outside. Markeith a little more inside and Marcus a little more versatile than his brother. That was a good catch by Tariq Black. Ball, number 22, Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris did a really this nice job of hedging that first ball screen of the two. Didn't even let the offensive man get to that second ball screen. Black originally came off the bench at the beginning of the season, but Will Coleman wasn't playing well, wasn't rebounding, body language wasn't good. So Josh Pastner replaced the senior with the freshman in the starting lineup. He played very well against LSU at nine points, nine rebounds, and Black does a nice job of sealing off inside as he gets older and learns his way around the post he'll do an even better job of sealing and getting low and really pinning his man inside that big body he can do some damage in the paint more pressure from Memphis they forced a number of turnovers with this in the first half we are tied at 39 early in the second half here at Madison Square Garden Joe Jackson trying to put some pressure get Tyshawn Taylor to turn his back Taylor a little hesitation the extra pass again. Marcus feeds Marquise for the layup. Morris twins are from Philadelphia. They've got a lot of friends and family here in New York for this game tonight. Tyshawn Taylor's from New Jersey. He's got a lot of people here. So the Morris brothers committed to Memphis when John Calipari was coaching the Tigers. And when he left to go to Kentucky, that opened it up for them to go to Kansas. It always seems like Bill Self's got quality big men, doesn't it, on all of his Kansas teams? Taylor. Marcus Morris. Look at that move. And you mentioned Bill Self. I think one of the best coaches in the country. But I think one of the best offensive coaches in the country. Does a great job of putting in different offenses. He's had this high low since he was back at Oral Roberts. Taylor with a block. Memphis gets it back. Barton the miss. 
And Will Barton kept that ball high. Just wasn't strong enough in going back up. Probably should have used the backboard to knock that thing down. Now, this is a long-armed group of Memphis Tigers. Quick, athletic, and skilled. And from the quotes we've read and heard, Jake, confident. Uh, even the freshmen are saying things like, there's a block. Freshmen are saying things like, we've got the most talent in the country. We're going to win the national championship. This is a, this is not a shy group Josh Pastner has. Well, you like the confidence, obviously, saying that. It'll, and, you know, that's going to get on a lot of bulletin boards. But, you know, Will Barton can say, we're going to win the national championship this year. I'm guaranteeing it. But he get some sort of coupon if they don't win it. <laughs> Taylor. Oh. Well, Tyshawn Taylor has really done a nice job driving the ball into the paint here tonight and converting. But for the most part, he's played under control. He's done a really nice job when he's penetrated. He doesn't take it too deep. He'll pull up for that little floater in the lane or take it in and he stops, either makes a jump stop or is able to pass it out. He's turned it over a couple of times. Most of the turnovers have come elsewhere for Kansas. 6 0 run right now for the Jayhawks. Carmouche off balance. Rebound Reed. And great ball movement by the Jayhawks in the open look. Bill Self said it over and over today. If you move the ball, you'll get an open shot within 15 seconds. They're getting lots of open looks. And it's a 9-0 run right now for KU to give them a nine-point lead. Against Memphis, and again, if there was one theme, Jay, shoot around today for Kansas, it was move the ball, and they're doing it well. Well, they are, but a little miscommunication here by Memphis. Watch this ball screen here. Call the freeze right there. Freeze. Carmooch gets screened. This guy's got to pick him up, and they have to communicate. Now, after Tyrell Reed gives the ball up, he's going to go to the opposite corner. Now, where's Carmooch going? He's slow getting there. Miscommunication right there, slow getting there, and all of a sudden he's closed out late and actually bumped Tyrell Reed after he got that ball off. That could have been a four-point play, and that's something that is the hardest thing to work on for young players. It's to talk, communicate, to make sure they've got their assignments, their rotations, that if they do get some help, they communicate as to getting back to the proper man. Nice hedge to make the ball handler change his pass. Witherspoon slithers inside, has it partially blocked, and Kansas has it. A turnover gives it back to Memphis. Bill Self wanted a foul call there and didn't get it. As we step aside for the under-16 immediate timeout here at the Garden. Kansas leading Memphis by nine at a game. Uh, on ESPN 3D tonight, Jay Billis will slide over there along with Mark Jones. That uh, futuristic-looking robotic gizmo, that is a 3D camera. Isn't that what they sent down to find the Titanic? <laughs> Look at that, huh? Our camera guys do an unbelievable job. No matter how many D's they're shooting. Just stay within yourself on the pre-D telecast, right? Well, Elijah Johnson had that rebound. Marcus Morris took it away from him. That's where the big guy says, hey, little guard, get out of here. That's mine. See how Memphis responds. Kansas on a 9 to nothing run. Will Barton. Oh, Did it himself and converted. He got that ball to go down, but that was an awfully tough move to make simply because it was off of one pass. That young man's got a chance to be a really good player. He's slight of build right now, needs to get stronger, but he's long-armed. He can rebound one of the better guard rebounders in his class last year. Nice pass. Bob inside. Elijah Johnson to Markeith Morris. Not enough pressure on the ball, and then nobody called out the back screen when they lifted everybody up to be to the free throw line extended. Really well run by Kansas. Now a rare post look here for Memphis. Tarek Black. And it will stay with the Memphis 15 on the shot clock. One of the things that can take this away is pressure on the ball. A little fade screen, and now Tyrell Reed is going to set a screen for the screen, a little back screen. And this is where Crawford's got to step in and bump that cutter. He was right on line with Tyrell Reed. He's got to step in and get his body in the way of Markeith Morris. So that pass can't be thrown. But if there's more pressure on the ball, the passer can't see it. Nice penetration by Crawford. He finds Black for the slam. 
That's where Me Memphis has to get something done defensively. Got to start forcing some chaos, force some turnovers. Marcus, there's a little chaos. There's a turnover. There's more chaos right there. Oh, oh boy. That is sheer athleticism and maybe a little bit of good luck for Will Barton to convert that shot. And Bill Self wants a timeout. The whistle has blown. The players didn't hear it as play continued, but a timeout was called. So long, Josh Pastner, an assistant under Calipari at the end of his tenure there, to have to reteach everything to a brand new crop of freshmen. They're talented, but they still haven't learned how to play yet. Kentucky to Memphis, two of the youngest major college teams in America right now. And both of them very talented. Memphis is ranked 14th. They are unbeaten. They've got wins over LSU, Miami, but this is Kansas. This is the toughest test the Tigers have faced this year. So Jackson does a nice job of getting pressure on the ball out front. That guy's going to make a living playing basketball, I'm thinking, Jay. No, he's the real thing. He yeah. had a great summer, really worked hard, and he really improved his game. You know, he can play on the perimeter and inside. Nice pass. Black. A little strong off the back of the rim, and then off Markeith Morris out of bounds to Memphis. And Markeith Morris was on the line when that ball touched him. Good call by Mike Kitts underneath. This is where Memphis has to run good offense and score. They got an out of bounds play. It's like special teams in football and they weren't they weren't in the proper position but Crawford able to draw a foul by Elijah Johnson almost because he was out of position. Johnson just grabbed him wasn't sure where he was going. Third foul on Johnson. Both teams are pretty deep so both should be able to weather any foul trouble that they may encounter. Witherspoon. Battling with Markeith Morris out of bounds off Markeith again Memphis ball but there's an example of Witherspoon just not being strong enough look at his body and look at Markeith Morris's body well he probably should have gotten the foul there because Morris had his arms down he wasn't straight up the referee said he was but he wasn't and that's supposed to be an automatic call and they didn't call it Thomas Robinson replaces Markeith Morris loose ball Kansas ball Taylor out ahead of the pack and a foul Tell you what, that was a terrific hedge by Marcus Morris on that ball screen. And he was just so big on that hedge. This is the tail end of it. We didn't see the hedge. This is the end of the play, but that was made possible by Marcus Morris. That looked like all ball there. Second foul on Witherspoon. Taylor to the line. The Big 12 leader in assists right now. One thing Kansas has to learn how to do is deliver a knockout blow. Watch this hard hedge by Marcus Morris. Makes the ball here. It's almost like a double team, and Jackson loses control of the ball. Actually, that was Antonio Barton. It looked like well, lost control of the ball. Taylor misses them both. Kansas wasn't able to deliver a knockout blow to UCLA. They weren't able to deliver to Arizona. That's something this team's got to learn how to do. It's efficient enough offensively. I mean, they're shooting 57% as a team, shooting over 50% in this game, but they're not able to put people away. So is the problem they're giving up too many points or, the t or too many turnovers so they don't get as many? With 57% shooting, how do you not put teams away? Well, they're doing, they've are doing. they turned the ball over, and they've also given up a few second shots. And that's something that they clean those things up. There's no way that, that with those percentages, teams are going to be able to stay with them. Now, they're still obviously winning all their games, but... I think they could have won a couple of those games a lot more comfortably. It'll stay at this end of the floor on the tile. The arrow belonging to the Jayhawks. DJ Steppens into the game at number 30 now for Memphis. Witherspoon will come out, and Tyrell Reed will return for the Jayhawks. Kansas hasn't really forced a lot of turnovers on the part of this Memphis team, but they have forced them to take tough and difficult shots. Taylor, tough one. It's numbers for Memphis. Speaking of tough and difficult yeah. shots. Jackson, four on two, and now Taylor is injured. Tyshawn Taylor has just signaled to the bench, and he's gone down on the court. It looks like a cramp. Hopefully just a cramp, yeah.
practice and in games to do this track how many times they give dap the fist pump the touch on the head the verbal encouragement guys the lack of communication so important that you're expected to get a certain number in practice Jay just trying to foster good habits I got to be honest with you I've watched all night and there hasn't been a ton of it throughout the course of the game Jay yeah you tend to in this kind of environment start thinking about what you have to do and not throwing yourself into what the team's doing and that's what young players do and you know, Josh Passner's really done a nice job of trying to foster a, a, an atmosphere uh, of positive energy. And that's where that, that sort of charting of daps goes. And I think he found that out through the Boston Celtics and the L.A. Lakers. There was a, a study done by a, a clinical psychi sports psychologist that the Lakers and the Celtics have the most sort of positive high-fiving going on. And the team communicates that way and communicates in a, in a more positive fashion. He's trying to foster that with a very young team. That's a great point for us. By the way, Jay, I'm, I'm feeling a little low in the damp department tonight. I wish you could maybe up your dap numbers on, on our television. So you get off your backside and start doing something positive. <laughs> <laughs> we need to build a dap graphic. When you do something positive, I'll let All right, know and they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll put a graphic together. Maybe it's a big player of the game. It's been a dapless night here. Courtside, seven-point lead, six-point lead, rather, for Kansas over Memphis, 12-11. And as Jay talked about, here's that inability of Kansas to put away the Memphis team there letting them hang around while well, you're crying out for your star watch we'll get back to the game <laughs> Reed in some trouble good pressure but look how far out on the foot great pass they continue to play on and finally Relaford will finish Memphis did a nice job of forcing Kansas further out on the floor but that's where you can't let that kind of pass get all the way through that was a long pass that got all the way to the rim Coleman kicks it out the three rolls off the rim for Carmooch and here come the Jayhawks with an eight-point lead now nice. Robinson had a mismatch and Kansas takes advantage no team in America wants to do the high low big guy to big guy passing as much as a Bill self coach team well it's just another change of the angle you know Elijah Johnson didn't have the angle to get it in on the initial pass to Thomas Robinson he just gave it to the trail man 60 foot pass does not connect for the Jayhawks and the back comes Memphis Bill self can live with that one that wasn't a that wasn't a bad idea what just just wasn't executed properly High ball screen. Largest lead of the night right now for the Jayhawks. Martin can't finish. Rebound to Markeith Morris. Looks like he got pushed. Needs to be stronger with it. And the hard foul will send Relaford to the line when we come back. And there was the transition defense that Doris Burke talked about at the beginning of the show here for game two. The Orange and the Spartans. What a great matchup that is. A couple of top ten teams. One Hall of Fame.